Hi there, Jeremy here from VVAX Metro Tech Canada. I'm going to go through our VLOC3 Pro receiver, what the various symbols on screen mean, how to get into the menu and set up different functions, as well as on our transmitter. So tag along, I'm sure you'll like this one. Okay, so we're going to get into how to set this thing up to your own personal preferences. I have my own personal preferences and I'm sure that over time you will have yours as well. You may set it up a little bit differently than I do. Different frequencies, different sounds, different modes maybe that you have turned on. So let's get into how you can change that and customize the receiver to your liking. Let's jump into our receiver. We're going to talk about the screens and the different functions and different ways that we can set this unit up. Obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is push the power button on, push and hold, and on comes your receiver. So starting from the top left and moving across the screen, up here we have our locate mode. So this is going to be peak with arrows. This is my preferred locate screen and a lot of folks preferred locate screen. This is going to allow you to have your peak bar and your arrows, confirmation arrows if you will, on screen at the same time. There's more on that in other videos. We cover off peak and null and how to use that to determine your locate field. The next thing that we see here is our milliamps. That's gonna be how much current we have on our line. Next that is gonna be the number that is basically a reference of this peak bar right here. If you were to count each one of those ticks, the number will be the same as if you counted each one of those. Over here on the right hand side, is going to be a few different symbols. This is a basic VLOC3. I don't have any of the options in this one, but right here um, we would have a Bluetooth if we have GPS connected. Um, we have our speaker volume right here, so obviously my speaker is off for this. We have our battery indicator right here, and right now I have the lithium ion battery pack in here and it's displayed in green. If I had my AA pack, that would be displayed in blue. So up here is my decibels, and that basically is how sensitive I have my coil set to look for the utility that I'm actually trying to find. I don't increase or decrease the actual signal that's being put out. That is referenced by my milliamps. This is just how sensitive do I have the coils on here. An example of that is if I had something that was quite deep, say six feet deep in the ground, I would need to potentially turn my sensitivity up versus if it was only two feet deep. Next to that is going to be our depth. This is a constant changing depth and that's what's displayed right here. Back over to the right hand side we have our frequency. So as I change and push my F button my frequency will change on that side. Now down below here we have, like I said before, this is our peak bar. So right now you can see it's changing a little bit from red to blue, but mostly red. And then just next to that we have what's called a lagging indicator or a peak indicator. That there as I was, would wave this back and forth through the field would stick at the highest point wherever that peak was. And I like to keep it, and most of you folks should, basically center a screen or maybe even a little bit less. So down below, these here are our, our arrows, our null arrows or confirmation arrows as I like to say it, which gives us an idea of what the field actually looks like. So the compass here on screen is not a north, south, east, west compass. It's the direction to which my utility is beneath me. And it will also light up blue just to give us a confirmation of, hey, I like what I'm seeing down here. So going to our actual buttons down here, power on and off gain up and down with our plus and minus buttons. If I push that, my gain goes down, my gain goes up. It is also semi-automatic gain. So if I was to max this gain right out and the bar goes right off screen, I can do a quick press of the minus button and it will try to center it to the center of screen. In the center here is our F button, which is our frequency button. So you'll see up here as I push that F button, my frequency changes. I can also push and hold on that F button. If you're like me, someone who clicks that F button too many times and constantly goes past the frequency that you want, you can push and hold the F button, get into this frequency screen, and there I can actually scroll through and pick the frequency that I want to locate in. Push the enter button, and now we're in 32.8. Over on the right hand side here is my M button or my mode button. That will scroll me through what modes I have turned on with a quick press. 
So on this one, I have my two favorite, which is peak with arrows and omnidirectional peak, which is gonna allow us to locate in 360 degrees, really great for doing sweeps. Down below that is my I button, my information button. A quick press of that will get me into my information screen. If for some reason the depth wasn't being displayed or my milliamps, I could try and force it to show me that information by a quick press here. Now, if I push and hold on that I button, we get into our menu here. So we can scroll through the menu. Let's go back to our locate screens. So if I push and hold on this M button up here, I will actually scroll through the locate screens that I have turned on. Now the first one that comes up is our sawn mode. So in this sawn mode shows us up here also that we were locating a sawn. Gives me my depth up here on screen. On the sides is where it gives me my level or my bar indicators, which in this mode I don't really need to pay attention to. All that I'm looking for is this arrow, the little blue ring, and then that sawn in the center. And in this screen, simply just to change frequencies, we just push the F button and we will scroll through the frequencies that we have available for us. Now I'm gonna push and hold that M button again, which is gonna get me into my offset locate mode. So my plus and minus buttons in this screen, basically all it's gonna do is, depending on how deep my utility is, I may need to bring my perspective in and change the scale of the screen and that I do with my plus and minus buttons. Up here we get our milliamps, and then as well we have our depth below here. This tells me my depth beneath me and off to the side, depending on which side that utility actually was from me. Up in this little screen here, this is a plan view mode, which shows us the orientation of the utility that we're tracing. And as well in this screen, we have a green, blue, red in this basic ring here as well. This ring here as well is called our confidence ring, and the tighter that it is to the center, the more confident I can be in the results that I'm getting in this screen. So I will push and hold the M button again, and that takes me into my plan view mode. So this plan view mode is great for long haul locates like pipeline locates. Basically just gives me my line on screen. I will have a dotted or hash line on either side of it, which tells me my confidence. Again, we have our green, blue, and red to this bar. Up in the top corner here will show my milliamps and my depth over here. And the only thing to change in this screen is my frequency, should I want to change my actual frequency. So I'll push my M button again, and that will get me back to my main screen. Now the I button down here, if I push and hold on the I button, will get me into my menu screen. This is where I can actually customize and set up this receiver to my liking. I can use my plus and minus buttons to scroll through. I can scroll down and change my speaker volume. I can change my sound configuration, a whole bunch of different things. Let's go down to sound configuration. Two different modes here, you have FM and AM. And I'm gonna do another video on this explaining FM and AM and why and which one I like to use. So I'll push the I button to get back to my main screen. So we can scroll through here, maybe go to frequencies. So I can scroll up and down here using my plus and minus, push the M or enter button to add or remove a check mark, and anything with a check mark is gonna show up on my frequency button in my locate modes. Again, we'll push I to go back. Classic locate, this will allow me here to turn off what modes I want in my classic locate screen. And like I said, I like peak with arrows and omnidirectional peak. Locate perspective is also gonna allow me to turn off or on any of those additional locate screens that I may want or not want. In this situation, transverse graph basically gives us a graph of our peak and null on screen as you wave it back and forth. And I don't typically use transverse graphs, so I just turn that one off. Down here we have our desired depth. I can push the enter button and go ahead and change that. Warnings is another one I can go into, and I like to have my overhead cable on, my shallow depth, and my overload, but the swing warning I turn off because I know well enough not to swing this around like I'm whacking weeds. The last thing that we get into here is a self-test, and if I simply press the enter button, I'm gonna back away from a metallic object. I'm gonna push the enter button, and it will run through and actually do a test of the coils in this receiver. 
Now I will get green check marks on this one throughout all of them. If I happen to get a red X in any one of these, make sure you're not leaning this on the tailgate of your truck or vehicle. Step away from that, step away from your transmitter. If it happens to be on, go ahead and turn it off. Redo the test and you should get all green check marks. If for some reason you don't get all green check marks, then it may be time to send it in for service. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our transmitter. And this is going to apply to either a five watt or our 10 watt transmitter. So I can see on screen here, this icon shows me that I am in induction mode. I am in 32.8 kilohertz. My speaker is turned off and I'm on level one and my battery is fully charged. If I push the plus button, it will up my level and I can go up to level three. Now, what I'm gonna do is plug in my leads and show you what that screen looks like. All right, so now I have my leads plugged in, which is shown by this indicator up here. It has changed me to 512 Hertz because that's the last frequency that I was using when I had my leads plugged in. And now I'm at 25 milliamps. These transmitters will try and self-regulate to 25 milliamps when they are just connected and on basic power level. I can increase the power output by pushing the plus button up and it will increase how much power I am sending out from this transmitter. I'll show you what it looks like when we have a clamp plugged in. Okay, so now I have a signal clamp plugged in which shows me by this icon right here, simply looks like a clamp. Goes to 32.8 because that was the last frequency I was using with the clamp plugged in. And I can use my plus and minus buttons to increase my output here up to level three. Okay, so now I'm back to my direct connection leads and we're gonna go through some of the functions in this actual transmitter. So obviously down here, I have my F button to change my frequency, my output, I can change by my plus and minus buttons. This is how much current I am actually putting out on the line. And you'll see that with my direct connection leads by the milliamps changing. I can push the I button and it will give me more information or settings that I can change. First one I come to is my volume. I can use the plus and minus to increase or decrease the volume. Next one I come to is my voltage and I can use this to see if there is any voltage on the line that I am actually hooked up to with my leads. Next one I come to is an ohms test, and this is good for when we are doing fault finding. So this will go ahead and do a mega or a ohm check of that faulted utility that we may be trying to find. Next one here is multi-frequency, and what I can do is I can actually go through and change the different frequencies so I can send out various different frequencies on the utilities that I may be trying to locate and change that here. And now I'm putting out three different frequencies from my transmitter. One word about this though is, it will split the output between those three frequencies. So the next thing after that, as I'm pushing my I button, I can get into my frequency menu. This here by pushing the F button will allow me to turn off or turn on frequencies that I would like to use. Anything with an X next to it is going to be ones that I have turned on when I push the F button in my main screen. To get back out, all I do is push my I button and scroll back to the main screen. On the front of the transmitter here, this is obviously our lead connection. We have our connection for our battery charger and right next to that is a fuse. Well, I hope this helped with the setup of your receiver and transmitter. If you ever have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to us or your local distributor as we'll be more than happy to help out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our videos as well as smash that like, put a comment down below, and hey, maybe you'll see the video that you asked for on this channel soon. Thanks very much and take care.